what's up, guys? Oh, my gosh. Um, I haven't done a Wednesday Wine with Haley in a good minute because I've been busy most Wednesdays. But I'm moving to Northern California this Thursday, so I was like, why not just, like, have a little goodbye party? So I'm drinking Behringer Chardonnay. Good stuff. One of my favorites. It's affordable. It's delicious. And it's good stuff. So I stopped drinking red wine recently because I started having, like, allergic reactions. I was, like, breaking out and getting, like, all red and messed up from red wine. So I stopped doing that for a minute. And I'm just, like, chilling on white wine. Start with some cherry chopstick because I've got a lot to talk about. Okay. So... There's a lot going on. So much is going on. Um, it's a little overwhelming, but exciting. And I'm excited that so much is happening. So many different opportunities are presenting themselves, which is super cool. Um, I am, I don't know how much I can say, but I'm going to be moving on Thursday for a month and a half, maybe two months, for a new job opportunity, which is pretty cool. But I'm excited about it and to learn something new and just make some money. And acting is so up and down and everyone's got to have their side hustle. And this sounds like a really cool opportunity. So that's what I'm going to do and see how it goes. And nothing's permanent. But yeah, I was an emergency dispatcher for five plus years. And at the same time was going on auditions and getting work. And when work speeded up, I'm like, quit my job like there's just no way I'm sick every Tuesday Wednesday because I was working on a show every Tuesday Wednesday for CBS so my boss caught on pretty quickly but um yeah this is just a cool opportunity to be like okay I work super hard for like one month month and a half and then I can get back to my life and my goals and dreams of what I love to do and have like a little cushion and not just be hoping like Oh, once in a while you get a job, which is pretty cool. I'm so sorry. Give me one second. <laughs> this is so rude. Sorry, guys. All right. So I brought my chair from my garden inside. Oh, Ooh, is this a spider web or something on it? Okay, now I'm creeped out like there's a spider under me, but, um, okay, it seems chill, but anyways, what do I want to talk, oh, okay, so what I really want to talk about, which, like, really upset me today, um, so as an actor, SAG after, I get all the screeners for the SAG Awards, and I got, like, the coolest movies, um, Lady Bird, so good, Mudbound, so good. Shout out to Macro, Charles D. King. Guys, that movie was so sick. Um, also, what else? Oh, Shape of Water, which was super interesting and beautiful visually. But I was, I saw it before I got the screener. I saw it in theaters twice. I saw it with my friend because he hadn't seen it, but Get Out and Jordan Peele's Get Out. I was so stoked about this movie, and I thought it was really cool and, like, made people feel racial tension, even if they're not that certain race, and, like, made other people understand. It was such a cool take on just racial topics, and I thought it was beautifully done. So cool how it was shot. Great acting, great cinematography. Everything was dope about that movie. However... It got nominated, but for, I guess, Golden Globe SAG Awards, but Get Out was nominated as a comedy musical. First of all, if anyone has seen it, it's not a musical at all. There's barely any music. There's, like, ambient, creepy noise, like, the shining, like, thriller music. It's not, and, yeah, like, okay, there was a... Childish Gambino song that opened up the movie, but it was just like a montage of her like buying donuts and him shaving. It's not 
a musical. Nobody sings or dances. That's not the movie. And it's definitely not a comedy. So I was just pissed off about this nomination. Like, and I watched this interview with Jordan Peele saying, like, oh, I'm very, like, grateful and happy that my film was nominated. However, it's not a comedy or a musical. So there is, and that, so the interviewer asked Jordan Peele, so what would you title your film as? And I think he said documentary. And I'm like, well, it's not a documentary. It's not real life. It's actors and there's a script. But I get what he's saying. Like, it's from, and I like how, um, like, Tarantino, it always says written and directed by Tar- Quentin Tarantino. Or, like, it says, but before Get Out, it says from the mind of Jordan Peele, which was cool. But because that's how I feel about my scripts. I'm like, from the mind, it's from my mind. It's not, like, written and directed. Like, that just is so professional. Like, it's from the mind of that person. And... It was just frustrating to me that there's no category that, I mean, I understand that, like, the voters had no category. I'm like, it's a drama. Nominated as a drama. Duh. Like, that seems logical to me. But um, he also said, well, if there was a genre, what would you call it? And he said, it's a social thriller, which I thought was interesting and I'd never even heard before. But it's a social thriller. And... It is touching on a serious social topic, but he just framed it as a thriller movie. You could do that with any topic, and you could switch it up with anything. You could do a social comedy, which there's a lot of those. But it was definitely not a comedy, in my opinion. That really made me mad. But um, it is an honor to be nominated and acknowledged for your accomplishments and recognized for your good work but at the same time like it's almost like they think it's a joke I'm like it was such a serious topic that this movie touched on like racism and I don't think that was funny in any way and also just the tone of the movie is not funny there's moments that are like "Uh," but most of it is complete horror and awkward moments of like oh my god like this is so uncomfortable which is exactly the the tone of the movie is not comedy at all it's a social thriller (laughs) but yeah there is I don't know there's no right answer but what I know about the industry and about the committee who votes on these films and determines where they should be placed is it's a group of old white men who have been in the academy like forever, who've been in this forever, and they're just old and white, and they're like, we want to see Casablanca, and they like, so it just almost made me feel like they see anything, any movie that has to do with racial topics as a joke and as a comedy, and it was totally not supposed to be taken that way. And if they saw it in that way, like, it's just disturbing to me that they saw that as a comedy. Because I definitely didn't see it as a comedy. And I thought it was a very unique, interesting way to get every person of every race to understand a feeling. And being uncomfortable and out of place and isolated and, like, completely out of your element and everyone's focusing on you for something super weird and it was such a creative way of expressing that but I thought the movie was so good but yeah I don't know I mean at this point there's nothing you can do because when people are in power they're in power and they choose what gets through and what doesn't get through and how it gets through and clearly it had such a huge social impact on people that it was taken out of theaters, put back in theaters. So I definitely think it deserved to be nominated. But yeah, just the, and I was just like, musical? Musical? Like, it's grouped in with musicals? Who, what, did they watch it? Did the voters watch it? That's just bananas to me that you would watch Get Out and think, Oh, yeah, that's a comedy musical. Like, you must be completely insane 
or you must have some weird social agenda, like some weird political social agenda, which is just messed up because it's art and there should be no politics involved in art, in my opinion, personally. But yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm getting so heated about it because it just upset me. I liked the film and I thought it was really cool. And for it to not be taken, I, like, I can't even imagine if I wrote a film that was like an action movie and they were like, or like it's a romance drama and everyone's like, oh, it's a comedy. I'm like, uh, did you miss the entire point of the film? Okay, who did they even watch it? It just made me question, did they even take it seriously and did the voters even watch, like, to nominate it as a comedy? Uh, yeah, every time I say it, I make myself matter. I'm like, a comedy musical, a comedy musical. It just drives me nuts because it's just not what it is. It's, it's just not what it is. So, uh, well, what else? What else can we talk about so I can get off the subject? Because that makes me upset. Get out. I'm like, upset. But yeah, it makes me upset. But um, something positive? Let's think about something positive. I mean, there's so much cool positive stuff happening right now. And weirdly enough, I've been reading my horoscope. I'm a Gemini, June 16th, Tupac's birthday, but um, I, I'm not into that stuff at all, like horoscopes, but I just read it for fun. I'm like, ooh, let's see if it matches up with my life. And so I read it the other day, and it was so on point. It was insane. I, I, okay, I don't want to really share but it just said, like, new job opportunities are coming your way and things like that, and which are happening. And also, I, I don't know how to phrase this. I'm, I don't want to, like, upset anybody. It's just my personal thoughts and feelings. But um, I'm very spiritual in my own way. And my friend said the other day we were talking about spirituality and God and whatnot, and he was like, so I think you're agnostic, and I was like, mm, okay, like, but I just don't like putting a label on it. I think me and my relationship with my spirituality is so personal, like, I don't even like talking to people about it, and I don't want to put labels on it at all, and where is this going? This is going somewhere. But I really don't like talking about it because people try to push their beliefs on you or they want you to explain yours. And I don't think you have any reason that you ever have to explain anything to anybody. Um, but it's like a personal thing with yourself. But um, it was definitely going somewhere related to what we were talking about. But talk about movies again. I'm like, I don't know, it's going somewhere, but not anymore. I mean, honestly, I'm just like uncomfortable talking about it because it's, it upsets people. And I'm like, I just want to be cool with everybody. I don't want to upset anyone ever. And I don't want to get into like some political argument or religious argument. And I've seen with family members, even like such close family members, you get into arguments with them about politics and who voted for who and Republican, Democrat and Christian, Jewish. I'm like, okay, guys, like this is just, this is just splintered subject matter. It's not, and we're taking away from the love and happiness and fun and connection we could be having as a family now, just because you voted for someone and I voted for someone else. And it's, something that separates people and makes us divided when we should just be together and talk about specific issues and not names. Like, it's not like, are you for Hillary or Trump? It's like, what do you think about this topic? Not, and people get so closed minded. They're, they're not thinking about the broad picture. They think Hillary, Trump, Democratic, Republican, like they don't think, okay, what, well, what do you feel about immigration? What do you feel about 
healthcare, what do you feel about this subject? People just group it all together. And that's another thing I got. I've been getting so sick of Facebook recently because it's just so much negativity on there. And within family, like, family members will, like, unfollow you. And I don't post anything political, what I believe. That's my... That's my damn business, honestly. But I, and like, as is your religious beliefs, that's your personal business between you, your family, your husband, whatever, your personal close family and friends, whatever. It doesn't matter to tell people on Facebook and socially put that out there or try to like convert people. And I've had a lot of pushing on me recently. And I'm like, dude, like, I love you, you love me, we're cool, we get along, what's the problem? Like, but I'm a good person, I know you're a good person, I'm not worried about what your label is, and I feel like it's the same as separating people by race, it's like you separate people by religion, you're like, oh, if you're part, if you're not part of my religion, you're not like me, and it's the same thing, it's like, okay, a Chinese person a Korean person, a Japanese person, they're all Asian, but there's so many different religions within that area of the world. And within America, there's every religion, but we're all people. And like, it's just too many sectors of people trying to separate themselves from being human. And we're all just human. And nobody knows any better than anyone else. So to put like, oh, you're not Christian, you're not this, you're not that, and to be like, you're not like me, is just, for me, completely absurd. But um, my little cousin, she's such a smart little girl, she just turned 14, and her sister is 11 or 12. Um, but we were all having dinner and they're so smart and cool. And I love kids cause they're just honest and they seem to get it. I'm like, adults get it together. The kids like understand. And I remember being a kid and like listening to all these adults being like, kids are stupid. <laughs> like it's so simple. We're all human, Democrat, Republican, black, white, brown, like Chinese, like everything, we're all human. And it just made so much sense to me as a kid. But my little cousin said some dope things at dinner. She said, um, she said it like so strongly that I was like, yes, girl, yes. Like, but she was like, we're all just people and it's just pigment in our skin. We are no different. And I was like, yes, Violet, go girl. And I got so, I was like, oh. Cry. like I'm so proud of her but then we started talking her her younger sister was saying there's a boy in the fourth grade class who has got both his ears pierced and wears earrings in both his ears um and that all the other kids were like that's weird you're not a girl and we're making fun of him and um her little sister was like I don't know everyone thought it was weird and so the older sister who had just turned 14 this last month, she was like, what did she say? It was so, it was so perfect. And she said it like so strong again. I was like, yes, girl, preach at dinner. She was like saying everything. I was like, oh, I'm so proud of her. But um, she said, I don't want to like butcher it and like change what she said. But she said, oh, she said like, why should it be any different for boys or girls? If girls are allowed to do it, then boys should be too. Dang, girl! Like, she was just saying so many things, and I just was like, I saw a different side of her, and I'm like, wow, you're really growing up and maturing, and I've been babysitting her since she was born, and saw her before she even spoke English, and just to see her so confident in what she knows is right, and I guess, personally, I believe is right, so it made me very proud like I'm sure some other person would be like mm, you're wrong but for me I was like yes that's exactly right and I'm so proud
proud of you for saying that at such a young age. And she says it with, like, such conviction that it, like, moved me. And I was just like, I need to go to the bathroom. I was like, <laughs> but <laughs> I, like, helped raise these little girls. And they looked up to me so much. Which brings me to another topic, which I actually talked to them about years ago. But I used to smoke cigarettes, but I would smoke in front of them, and I would smoke, like, with their mom and stuff. They knew their mom smoked, so I was like, oh, it's okay, and um, I felt like they looked up to me so much that it was one of my reasons, and this guy who I knew who had cerebral palsy, and he smoke he never smoked cigarettes but he smoked cigars after he got cerebral palsy because they said it might help because it makes you like extremely shaky and he was a guy I worked with years ago and um an older guy like in his 60s and he was like you're young you're smart why are you smoking and he gave me this book and one of the chapters there's all these different strategies of how to quit smoking and one of the chapters said it's very personal. You can't tell anyone what it is, but it's been so long since I smoked cigarettes, so I'm going to tell you guys. But um, he said, get an index card, write down your top five reasons personally for you. Be a secret. Don't tell anyone your, your top five reasons why you want to quit smoking. And so um, I, think I, I think I only got to four, but... Um, my first reason was my cousins who really look up to me and my two, they look up to me so much and I'm setting such a bad example and I'm going to feel extremely guilty if they ever smoke and be like, oh, they thought I was like the best thing ever. And I sat down with them when I quit smoking, I told them I'm quitting smoking. I quit smoking and I am so sorry I ever smoked in front of you, and that was not okay, and I'm sorry. I never should have done that, and I made it so clear to them. We sat, and we laid in the hammock together, and we talked for, like, hours, and um, they totally understood it, and I didn't even realize they were so scared for me because in school, they teach you what smoking does to you, so they knew, and they were like, You're, we thought you were going to die, and, like, kids don't understand. It's not, like, immediate, but they were already concerned about me and worried. And so I explained to them, like, this is not okay what I've been doing. But um, the second reason was for my ancestors who have all, like, grandparents who have passed away from smoking complications. Um, my dad's parents smoked like chimneys and both died due to those complications. And um, I don't... Oh, okay, so that was number two. Number three was, I don't want to die in a hospital. And I want to die, like, of natural causes or in my sleep or whatever. I don't want to be laying in a hospital thinking to myself, I did this to my damn self. Like, I, I want whatever. If I get some disease, something happens later in life, that's fine with me. But I don't want to be sitting there thinking... I did this to myself, and this could have been prevented. Um, and then four, what was four? What was the fourth one? Well, I don't know. That was good enough for me to quit. I was like, bye. Done. But, yeah, it's interesting um, also in today's world, 2018, 2017, um, vaping, we don't know. Our generation is the guinea pigs for this. Like, it sounds like it's better and it feels better than, like, lighting something on fire and inhaling the smoke directly into your lungs. But at the same time, like, COPD, emphysema, all that, it's like moisture in the lungs and, like, putting vapor may be worse than putting smoke, or it might be less worse. We don't know at this point. So this generation is like a complete guinea pig to this new thing, vaping. So, and FDA hasn't like looked into it much, and there's no way to look into it. Like back in the 20s, women were told you should smoke cigarettes 
because it helps with stress during your pregnancy. Like while you're pregnant, smoke cigarettes because it helps with stress and it makes the baby smaller so delivery will be easier. So it, clearly that was all wrong. So we think we know everything and like it's better than smoke. But I have a lot of friends that vape and I know it makes them feel better and they definitely feel better and they work out and they're not like wheezing and hacking and they can breathe better and so I'm hoping it's a better thing but yeah we have no idea what it's gonna do wine everyone's been drinking wine a long time we know that's good but yeah technically actually I was reading an article that white wine if you drink white wine, you have a way higher risk of skin cancer, which both my parents had a little bit of skin cancer they had to have removed, like, I think in their 30s, 40s. Um, I don't have anything like that at this point. But white wine apparently uh, increases your chances of getting skin cancer. But red wine is supposedly really good for you. Oh, there's a ghost. No, I think just one of my pictures fell off my bookshelf. But um, red wine is supposedly like glass or two a day is good for like blood circulation and for your heart and whatnot. But yeah, there's there's multiple sides to it. It's like okay, too much is bad. A little bit is good. Too much is that you have to have a balance with everything in your life, and that's the hardest part, right? That's the hardest part, is finding a balance. Like, too much water, not enough water. Too much wine, not enough wine. Too much exercise, not enough exercise. But you got to find your own balance in your body, and you'll know when you feel right, which I'm feeling I'm feeling right recently. I've been feeling really good. I'm exercising. I've been doing so much cool stuff and doing such beautiful, cool things. So I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling super happy, which is good. It's a nice change because I was feeling kind of down the dumps, not going to lie, for a good minute. But I feel like myself again and that, like, my spark is back. And I'm feeling really good and excited about the future. And it's 2000. I don't think I made a video since 2017, like December, because I got super sick with the flu. And then, you know, the holidays happen. You're like family, 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 New Year's, ah, family, ah. So good to say hello. I hope everyone has a beautiful new year. And. Is it February? Oh, Valentine's Day. Hey. For anyone, by the way, okay. So for anyone who doesn't have a Valentine, a boyfriend, a husband, a lover, or whatnot, me and my girlfriends were planning on doing a Galentine's Day thing, but now I'm going to be moving. So that's not going to happen. But um, just do something for yourself. Treat yourself to a massage, take yourself to lunch, a nice dinner, buy an expensive bottle of wine, chocolates, watch a movie, you know, love yourself. So I think it's such a beautiful holiday, and I've never, even years I've been single, it's never been like a sad thing. And I, hear all, I see all of my friends and people posting things on Facebook like, oh, I'm so not looking forward to Valentine's Day, and all these memes about like, me on Valentine's Day, single and alone, like, and I'm like, it's such a beautiful thing to be alone. Think about it. When you find the person that's right for you, and you actually are going to be together until you die, die, until you die, like, hopefully, if it works out that way, but the person you end up with forever, that's forever. This is your small, tiny portion of time to be on your own. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And it's valuable. It's extremely valuable this time. And so don't 
splurge on yourself. The money you would spend to buy your man chocolates and go out to dinner and buy new lingerie or do whatever sexy stuff you would do for him, do for yourself. And I know it sounds super cliche because, like, everybody's like, love yourself, love yourself. But it's so important to love yourself and take some time to yourself and be with yourself and love yourself. Sounds crazy, but once you do it, you're like, why did I do this sooner? It actually sounds insane. You're like, take yourself out. Treat yourself. Whatever you would want that man to buy you, buy that for yourself. Buy yourself a new dress. Get that massage. Drink that wine. Eat the filet mignon. Eat the sushi. Go to a movie. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, don't go crazy out of your ways to where you're like financially not capable of doing it. But I think it's super important to love yourself. And one of my best friends, Ashley, Ashley Dub, A Dub. Um, he, he said something years ago, it's probably like six, seven years ago. Oh my God. Oh my God. Time flies. Um, but I know it must've been like five years ago, but, um, we were going to a Kings hockey game and we went to Hooters and got like hot wings and drinks first. And he, he asked me just so seriously and he was like, are Haley and Haley friends? And it just caught me totally off guard. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Haley and Haley are like, we're best friends. But it wasn't always like that. And we discussed that too because he was the same way. And we totally understood the fact that it's not always like that. And how important it is to be friends with yourself when you're like, you guys are all nice, but I would love to go home and kick it with myself. <laughs> like, it's so important to be good on your own. And I love chilling on my own, like cleaning my house, listening to music, dancing, planting my garden, drinking my wine, eating my dinner, cooking. Like, I love, I love being on my own. So much. I love my friends and family, but there's nothing like that alone time that you just crave and love and you recharge. It's beautiful and imp so important. So I just hope any single people, men, women, everybody, this Valentine's Day, just recharge and do your own thing. And it's any other day. It's just a day that like companies made so they can make a ton of money. And Honestly, for people who are in relationships, I feel like we should, like, change the meaning of Valentine's Day, but people who are in loving relationships should do something for single people. Like, that's what we should change it to. Single people, you should send them roses or chocolates or do something to be like this. We're in love and we're going to do something for you to give you love because you don't have it. Like, why isn't there a holiday for people who don't have love? Like, there's a holiday for like, we have love all year long. Let's just celebrate it more. No, let's do something for people who don't have it. Let's do an anti valent What should anti-Valentine's Day be? Send me comments. Let's figure it out, guys. Let's, let's strategize. There should be an anti, not anti-Valentine's, but, because that's like a negative thing, but I'm like, let's think of a day that could be for single people, and people in relationships have to give, that's a lot though, that's a lot of money, because it's a lot more single people than married and happy relationship couple people, so, dang, I would like empty the bank account. If I gave all my single friends a present, I'm like, I can't afford that. <laughs> but yeah, love is hard to find, but that's why it's good when you do, because it's rare. If it wasn't worth anything, it'd be everywhere. You get it, you, every person you'd meet, you'd have love. But the fact that it's rare, that's what makes it. So, alright, let's end on that note because it's getting far too long. 
and I'm about to watch a movie. So, bye guys. Thanks for chilling with me and drinking wine.